Hello and welcome to Capital Dialogue. My name is Jessica Machetta. I'll be your host of the show today. I'm joined by Senator Ron Richard from Joplin. Thank you Good for day. having me. Uh, former Speaker of the House, also joining me today, Representative Stephen Weber of Columbia and Representative Anzara of St. Charles. Thank you for coming today. Absolutely. Thank you. And we are talking about economic development, which is, uh, is a, a big topic this year and has been um, for the past couple of years. It's been um, the overarching effort of the legislators, and uh, this year it's no different. Uh, we'll start with you. Do you want to give us an update on, on what's being discussed in the Senate right now as we're, we're almost at the halfway point of the session? Um, on economic development, we haven't had a bill passed since I passed in the House. Um, it's been pretty slow. Um, when we have a jobs creation bill, it gets tied with tax credits. And until the tax credit issue is resolved, there probably won't be a jobs bill. That being said, there's uh, the chairman of economic development, uh, Eric, uh, in the Senate has decided to split some things apart. We might get data centers which uh, would be helpful to Columbia and St. Charles, actually, and Branson. And uh, we might get the Sports Authority bill, which all communities are needing. But the danger is that those tax credit issues will need to be resolved at some point in time. And I do want to talk about tax credits because that has been a contentious issue for a couple of years now. Uh, but moving back to the, the couple of measures that you already talked about, the Sports Authority, mm -hmm. if you can tell our, our viewers what that would do as far as boosting um, some economic development in, I guess, mostly our metro areas. Right? Well, it, it, it came from uh, St., uh, Kansas City and St. Louis originally, and all the other communities, Springfield, Joplin, Columbia, Cape, have decided that they can uh, uh, have a, uh, a partnership in this too. And what it does on new events, you can capture some of the new money and uh, go out and recruit new events, whether it's uh, in St. Louis City for uh, Final Four of the NCAA, or whether it's uh, something down at Bartle Hall or in downtown Kansas City or Columbia doing uh, track and field like they do. Um, and that's pretty much the sense of it, is that you capture part of the new revenue, lets us recruit and get on an even scale with other states around us. And you have a good feeling about being able to push that through this session? Well, uh, the uh, Chairman of Economic Development and I, uh, uh, Senator Schmidt and I, have both filed the bill. It's passed. We're just waiting for it to come up for debate on the calendar. Okay, and let's move over to Representative Zare. You're the chairwoman of the Economic Development Committee on the House side. Mm -hmm. um, what's been discussed regarding tax credits and the sports authority, and why do we keep getting hung up on tax credits in general? Well, let me, let me just say, uh, the senator was chair of economic development before I was. There was one person in between. But I agree with him is, uh, that we moved data storage and moved um, sports, amateur sports out pretty pretty quickly. And those are uh, bills that I think are, would be really good to st stand on their own merit and debate. And, and I'm, I'm hopeful, too, that we get across the finish line with those. And like the senator said, if we get tied up with tax credit reform again, um, we're going we're gonna to run into some trouble. It's our hope that we can get those standalone. Um, we're not addressing tax credit reform over in the House. What we've been doing is just moving those bills forward that we've already vetted and passed several times. Freight forwarders bill for the China Hub, of course, Amateur Sports, Manufacturing Jobs Act. We're going to, uh, we've heard that once and we'll probably vote that out, exec that out um, tonight. Um, and that targets the auto supplier industry. So I think all we can do is just keep fighting the good fight and trying uh, to put good legislation forward um, in hopes that we can come to some um, consensus on tax credit reform. You signed on to a bill that, uh, that addresses the very issue she just mentioned with auto suppliers mm -hmm. and auto manufacturers. And does that keep... Um, more of a, a cohesive business climate regarding that industry in Missouri, what would that actually do? It does. Um, let's start with the general premise that, that taxes matter. Um, you know, for good, or, for good or bad, they, they do influence business decisions. Um, when, when, when he was the Speaker in the House, we had a special session to deal with the Ford plant in Clay Como. And the idea there was that if we let um, Ford keep some of the employee payroll taxes they pay, um, they would be able to, to reinvest the money and update the plant. It, and it, it, it did and saved how many thousand jobs in, in, in um, three or four thousand three or four thousand jobs in Clay Como. 
Um, the idea now is to expand that to include suppliers, which would uh, help folks throughout the state. Um, so it wouldn't be uh, a policy that you know, was targeted at one particular part of the state, but would, would help small suppliers who, who feed into that plan to other plants um, throughout the state. I think it would be a good, a good bill. And it's, it's part of one of the governor's um, priorities for this year. So that bill would mandate that uh, manufacturers it would, I mean, purchase it would, their supplies from in-state suppliers? No, no, suppliers no. No, no. It, it, would, it would allow um, suppliers, so small companies that make different uh, auto components, uh -huh. when they add employees or when they expand their facilities, they would be able to, to keep some of the taxes they pay. On so it would be a tax credit for the suppliers as well? It, it's not a credit, but it's a tax reduction, yes. It would reduce the amount of taxes that they pay. Not only for those um, companies that supply parts for um, dealers, uh, Ford manufacturing, you know, the, the car manufacturers uh, based in the state, but out, state, out of state as well. So we really want to foster development of auto manufacturing suppliers. Okay. Uh, some might say tax credit and uh, tax reduction, same flavor, different color. Um, is that just... That's that's slightly true. I mean, they are they're similar, um, and, and they're both you know tax incentive programs. Um, they're structurally different in how they're carried out. And one thing that you know is, we had sort of a the climatic battle on tax credit reform yes, last we fall. We spent we spent about a month on it. And uh, there's I, there's clearly I don't think in this particular general assembly going to be any movement on that issue. Um, so the choice is: do we work on small separate things individually and try to get them passed and say we can these are the areas we can agree. Or do we have a, a you know the battle of an economic development that is all encompassing when everything's involved, which we did this fall, and we know what the outcome of that is. With the outcome of that is gridlock and nothing happens. Um, so I'm sure the issue of tax credit reform is not going to go away, but I, I don't see, and maybe my, my colleagues disagree with me, really any movement on that this year. So I, I, I think we're doing the right thing by taking the the approach of small piecemeal steps rather than one you know giant omnibus bill. And I do want to um, get back with you on uh, data storage centers, which mm -hmm. Representative Zare mentioned, because, uh, um, correct me if I'm wrong, but Columbia has had some data storage going on for quite some time. Um, well, we've, we've actually been trying to, to, to get a data storage center um, for quite some time, and we've come very close on a few deals, and we've, we've lost a couple companies, actually, and, and so this is um, part of the effort to make sure that doesn't happen. Now, have we lost them because of... Uh, competing states and, and what kind of incentives they can offer, that's kind of the argument we keep hearing. Right. We've, I mean, it's, it's, it's a variety of things, um, from uh, the tax structure, which other states do have, have these incentives, um, to the fact that the Columbia Airport uh, has to be expanded, which is some, a smaller um, issue that we have to address ourselves. Here in on. Jefferson City, we would love that. Us expanding the airport? Yes. Yeah, I'm sure you would. I'm sure you would love us to that pay for That would be great. Yeah. Um, but it's, it's a combination of those things. This is certainly a piece of that. Okay. Why are tax credits just a stalemate issue? Why can't they go anywhere? Um, <clears throat> let me give you a little history. Uh, we had the tax credit issue when I was Speaker of the House. And I didn't move on it because we couldn't, the House couldn't figure out who was negotiating in the Senate. I had about five people coming to my office wanting to do different levels of tax credit reform. So I thought whenever you have a controversy, you're better off not doing anything rather than moving on something that may be uh, in error. Um, with the budget, the way it is, again, for this is four years in a row, we have a downsizing budget, Jessica. I think if we don't address historic tax credits, low income tax credits, and we're going to continue taking money from blind, from women, uh, 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 with uh, single women, with kids trying to get some Medicaid for, for education, that uh, we're going to have a perilous situation. And I've of, of a mind, and I've, I've, I've come to the agreement in my own mind that uh, we're going to have to do some capping and sunset, particularly the two largest programs. When you can't fund education, higher ed, University of Missouri, where Representative Weber has taken a complete hit along with my university and the junior colleges uh, in St. Charles County, yeah, they're all taking a hit. That's just not right. And I suspect that uh, this sort of a quasi-entitlement to low income and historic is going to have to end. You're, you're picking on a really polarized issue. I feel like we should let Representative Weber as the only uh, Democrat here at the table today. Well, I don't respond. necessarily agree with him. You either. don't agree, agree with that either? Most of the time I do. Governor but. Nixon has, has come out saying that uh, taking away from programs for the needy is not how to balance the budget. Um, so is this an issue that is, is going to well, be he, along party lines? He, he appropriates and we dispose. So, you know, he can make a... He, he, can, he can make a... Um, 
a request, but that may not necessarily be the way it is. And he and I have spoken privately about these two tax credits, and he's somewhat agreeable to some form of uh, compromise. And that's, I think that's important that that we keep that o keep that open mind that we compromise it because it turned it like in special session it got to be just black and white. It was either you know we get rid of them completely or 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 we have everything. And I think there's I know, I know there's somewhere in the middle we can we can get like um, capping. I think if we cap if we lower the cap doesn't it make sense that we create that space in the budget? Um, and I don't know that we would have to sunset them to necessarily be effective, I think, but lowering the caps gives us budget certainty um, for as long well, as those caps are Well, the governor's council on the uh, uh, last couple of years has recommended caps. It's just that the caps that they recommended um, uh, kind of fell on deaf, deaf ears. Um, and that was, the, the, if I remember right, the low income was somewhere around 120 million and historic is around 70 million. And uh, frankly, my opinion is if 70 million is a good number, I think we ought to take 50 million and put it towards the capital and just leave 20 million for the other projects around the state, if you want my opinion on historic. So. Oh, to, to rehab the capital building. Yes. You know, that's an important, that's like $40 million or something, isn't it? To 400 million. 400 million, wow. Yeah. It's, it's a gorgeous building if it you is. look at capital yeah, buildings throughout building. the country. It is. We're going to have to take a short break. We'll be back, um, maybe talk about Mosira. What is it? What's happening to it now? And, and can we resurrect it? Uh, we'll be back right after this. Stay with us. I don't miss my car, and I feel safe when I ride this bus. A little over a year ago, I got my car demolished. So I gave up on driving, and I'm their best customer. I go everywhere on that bus five days a week. That's just part of my life now. I enjoy the camaraderie. The drivers are really good drivers, and they look after us. I just feel safe when I ride this bus. To find out how rural public transportation can put more life in your day, just give us a call. Mayday, Mayday. I need help. Vessel in distress, this is the United States Coast Guard. There are many thankless jobs out there. This isn't one of them. Welcome back. You're watching Capital Dialogue. I'm Jessica Machetta. Joining me today, Senator Ron Richard from Joplin and Stephen Weber, representative representing the Columbia area, and Representative Ann Zare from St. Charles. Um, we were talking about tax credits, and I'm sure we could fill up many shows talking about tax credits. But to move on to a different topic um, briefly is Mosira, which is sort of at a critical point right now because um, you all passed it uh, in special session. But then the bill that was it the Senate said had to be attached to it mm -hmm. didn't pass, and so the Supreme Court said that this bill, the Mosira bill, can't, can't exist. Is that right? That's correct. Okay. And Mosira is Missouri Investment mm -hmm. Science. Science. It's a science and Innovation, yes. Science and Innovation Reinvestment. Reinvestment. Thank you. Um, what would Mosira do? Well, it'd foster uh, development and um, investment in Missouri for biosciences, life sciences, and um, help fund those types of businesses. And really, you know, we've invested in the life sciences and biosciences in Missouri, and it makes a lot of sense to me that we just continue to invest in it. Um, and it's unfortunate that, that it got wrapped up in the tax credit uh, reform issue. Uh, but I think both the House and the Senate feel that these are important good bills, Osira, and um, we'd like to see it move forward. So, would you agree? Well, I uh, I did the amendment on Osira in the Senate, put it on uh, uh, Eric's bill. It passed in about 15 minutes, unanimous. And all we did is just make a subject appropriations, whatever dollar level we need to uh, fund that or not, uh, would be subject appropriations. I think that's going to stand. I think uh, uh, Eric and I uh, still have the bill out there. Uh, I filed it. We're ready for hearings, and I suspect it'll probably get a hearing sometime in the future. Um, that bill also, in, in addition to what Representative Sayer is correct, um, that uh, it also opens the opportunity for people to contribute and uh, to the state of Mosara and, and let that let that happen. Uh, 
Uh, speaker O'Neill of Kansas, uh, when I was speaker, we traveled together from time to time, and, and what they're doing over there is somewhat creative, and we need to kind of watch on the, the competition of what's going on around the country and around the, the nation. We need to be, uh, you know, we don't need to necessarily do it uh, uh, the same length and breadth they're doing. We need to do it better and cleaner. So I think there's an opportunity for Missouri. Can I, can I make one point on that? Yeah. Uh, the Supreme Court actually didn't throw it out. It was the Circuit Court, which means there, there's, there's not, well, there's not, it's important because there's an opportunity to appeal. Um, and the, the judge's ruling was based on the fact that um, they thought that senators in particular were thinking one thing when they voted on the bill, and then it came out as a substitute. Um, court, Missouri courts have never used legislative history before. Um, it, they don't look at, you know, at the federal level, you can look at legislative intent. The state courts, we look at what the law actually says on the paper, and we don't try to, the judges don't try to go in and figure out what legislators were thinking. Um, and so this is, this is kind of unprecedented for a judge to use that particular standard. So I, I think there's a decent chance that it's overturned on, on appeal. So does it make more sense to try to push through another measure to replace it or to try to appeal the decision? You know, I mean, I, I like, both my colleagues, I've supported Mossire um, for a couple of years now, so I'm, I'm certainly content doing either way. And I think it's, it's, we can certainly try to pass it clean, um, you know, and, and whoever, if folks want to make legal appeal, that's a done decision I'm going to make. So um, they can proceed with that and we can, we can pursue it through two different avenues. We're starting to get, like I mentioned earlier, almost to, it's almost spring break for you all right around the corner. That's sort of a critical halfway point. Um, we're getting to the point where you're going to see less issues in committee and more debate going through the, the two chambers to go through the process. So what kind of a time crunch are you all under to, to get these, these issues pushed through? We can knock it out in the House pretty quickly. I mean, that, <laughs> that's never been a, uh, we can move a bill, or I'd say we, the, the, the House in a whole can move a bill um, very quickly if, if folks in the House have a mind to do so. Um, the, the Senate is the more deliberative body, that they take more time, um, and there are certainly some senators that enjoy taking their time, and uh, I think that that's probably where the, the time crunch will most likely occur. Probably. Uh, the rules on both sides are so, uh, so much different. Um, uh, Representative Weber is right. The, the rules are stacked against a debate for a long time. Uh, the Speaker has a lot of power that he can uh, recognize people that he wants and debates only 15 minutes. In the Senate, a person can talk as long as they want, as you know, Jessica, for any subject they want. Um, priorities of the Senate, uh, Mosaira has been one of them. I think it'll move. There's pl still plenty of time. I mean, we're just getting into the, the point. First half is usually committees and, and uh, appointments. So, you know, we're, we're in good shape. I, don't, I think we can still do what's uh, priorities in the Senate and finish those. And, and after a dialogue with the House, I'm sure we can get it done both sides. You had mentioned it, of course, you're from the Columbia area, which is where our university is, and um, you have colleges in your area, and, and so do you, so none of you are strangers to education and the needs of, of your constituents. Um, you had mentioned that we have a need for job training, that there are jobs out there for Missourians, Absolutely. we just can't fill them. There's, and there's, I said there's not enough jobs, that's certainly true, but there's a myth that there's no jobs. And let me give you some concrete examples of that. In the healthcare field, I mean, that's growing rapidly. Uh, right now, folks who get a two-year degree from a community college, which are located all over the state, uh, can become a physical therapist assistant, make about $40,000 a year. And for folks that pass, uh, I talked to folks at Mobile Area Community College last week, they said that their class last year, the folks that passed their statewide boards, had 100% job placement. Every single person who passed a statewide board, because the healthcare field is growing so quickly. The problem is, is that when we've been cutting funding to higher education, to community colleges, um, they've had to reduce their class offerings. And so now, the School of Nursing, they have almost five times as many qualified applicants who are already University of Missouri students who are trying to get into the nursing program. They can't get in because they can't expand the program. That's right. Students, well, in stu part, though, because they can't find nurse educators. Right. No, That's absolutely. That's part of it. Uh, yeah, no, they can't. They it's can't. not only funding. Well, no, it's funding, but a lot of it is they can't afford to pay salaries like, because mm -hmm. people are, the job market's so good, folks are doing other things. Right. Um, so people end up getting degrees in things they didn't want to. Uh, they end up getting degrees in things we, that you know, they didn't intend to go to school for and they can't find a job when they're done. Or community colleges, folks who are you know, making minimum wage jobs, who are trying to improve their lives, say, I know there's a job out there, I want to get myself educated. And even though they qualify for the program, they can't get in because of funding. And that, that's just wrong, I think. I think all of these um, are starting to, to come into this uh, sort of vicious circle because you said we can't make cuts to education. Uh, obviously, you're saying we need more education, but uh, the budget year is just makes it a tough situation for everyone involved, I guess. Uh, we can talk more about this. we got to take another break, so we'll be right back after this. 
Has anyone ever said you are the picture of health? You look healthy and you feel fine. But that may not be the full picture. Colorectal cancer is the number two cancer killer. It doesn't always cause symptoms, but it can be prevented. Get screened. Make sure you are the picture of health. To learn about screening in St. Louis, call 314-879-6392. That's 314-879-6392. All across Missouri, people are making a difference. AmeriCorps, providing resources to meet human needs. VISTA, building better communities. Learn and Serve, promoting the service of youth. Senior Corps, sharing wisdom and experience. Make a difference, be a volunteer. This message brought to you by the Missouri Community Service Commission. For more information, visit movolunteers.org or call 877-210-7611. Welcome back to Capital Dialogue. I'm Jessica Machetta, joined today by Senator Ron Richards from Joplin, Stephen Weber from Columbia, and Ann Zare from St. Charles. We're having some good discussions about economic development, and I know that's the, the, the huge issue that's just the overarching issue, not only in Missouri, but other states. Um, and before the break, we were uh, talking about how um, it seems you can't bolster some economic development programs, which comes down to education when you're on a, a tough budget year. And who do you take from? Do you take from the blind and from single women and uh, throw that at higher education? Or, you know, how, how does that work? Um, and I'd like to get your take on, on how that balances right. out and where that, that pinch is felt the most. You know, I think we need, to, we need to be more specific. It's not a matter of being pro-taxes or anti-taxes or pro-economic development or anti-economic development. You've got to actually look at the nuance. For example, um, I think collecting online sales tax, uh, that doesn't hurt Missouri businesses at all. It actually helps Missouri businesses because people have incentives to shop inside the state. Um, that versus maybe raising a corporate tax, which would be destructive to business. Um, so I think we, we have to look at the nuance and just say not all taxes are good, not all taxes are bad. There's a balance we need to strike, and we can't paint with, with you know, broad brushes. We have to look at what these actual programs do to alter incentives and then pursue specific programs. Representative there? Well, I, I think I have to absolutely agree with you. Um, we were talking uh, off, offline about... Um, Taylor making some training um, into, am I jumping agenda here? No, you're fine. Okay. Um, and I know that the, the senator wanted to talk about it, but um, to, to, I guess, be, um, be more effective and efficient with, with the, the tools that we have um, and putting training together and ask the manufacturers what they want. And we did that in St. Charles with the Manufacturing Skills Institute. We partnered with the local universities, the local community college, Lynn Tech, um, and the Economic Development Council, and we tailor, we, we asked the manufacturing, the high-tech manufacturing, what do you need? And they told us, and it, they told us uh, that we needed affordable, we need it uh, in the evenings, because we were a small shop, we can't afford to, our guys, you know, to, to leave during the day. So it's those type of creative things that we need to look at um, to do less, to do more with less uh, dollars. You were mentioning some states to our south that seem like they have some good ideas. Do you want to talk about those? Um, Georgia, uh, the Quick Start program is a model uh, for the whole country, in particular Missouri, and I think Governor Nixon appropriately modeled his program after them. Um, you know, there's a whole lot of issues that just lap over each, each other. You, you talk about job creation and training, that's correct. We need to do that. But uh, uh, when we get into... Uh, Manufacturing, advanced manufacturing, talk about the car industry, the expansion of Wentzville and what went on in Ford, Kansas City. Um, and then you get in just-in-time delivery, and just-in-time delivery goes to the problem of US 70, Highway 70. How do you get just-in-time delivery when there's wrecks out there? We had to have helicopters sometime take supplies from uh, trucks to uh, uh, Wentzville in Kansas City because you couldn't get just-in-time because of a six-hour delay and wrecks, so that laps into uh, highway construction. What are we going to do to fund highways? That's probably for another time. Um, uh, I will. I will say one thing: the job creation. If you looked at the last two to four years, what people have run elections on is jobs, and if people don't pay attention about getting people work, they're going to pay a heavy price. 
I'm glad you mentioned I-70, and you're right, that is a topic for a different program. Mm -hmm. But uh, we are in the middle of uh, the Senate Transportation Committee hearing three weeks of testimony, which, if that gives you any indication as to how important it is that all ideas are brought to the table, whether we should make it a toll road, how many jobs would it create to rebuild I-70, et cetera. Um, we do just have a couple of minutes left, and uh, Representative Weber, you served in our military. Mm -hmm and uh, wanted to talk a little bit about going back to unemployment and finding jobs and how that's affecting our veterans. Right, we mean, we, we talk a lot about supporting the troops and, and, and appropriately so. Um, people need to understand that the unemployment rate nationwide for veterans between the ages of 20 and 24, these are folks that have probably did one tour on active, one uh, you know, contract on active duty or was in the reserves for a few years, maybe deployed. The unemployment rate is 27%. Um, almost three in 10 veterans, folks who have some job training, um, who were screened for mental health, who have almost entirely have high school degrees, um, come back and can't find jobs. And uh, it's, it's really, I think, a national disgrace to have that many folks unemployed um, who, who so recently served. And so whether it's working on increasing job training here at the state level, increasing services to mental health for returning veterans, um, and it's a priority, I think, that we need to really, as a country, step up to the plate and, and, and work to fix. I believe on the congressional level that we are seeing at least some ideas thrown around yeah, they, by some of our congressional delegates about giving offering incentives to businesses to hire right and, and they paid the for it by they paid for it by taking money from other veterans at the VA home loan so I'm not happy with the, the so that's not a good fix I you know Obama supported it I support Obama I was not very happy with his policy on that okay well that's going to do it for us and I appreciate you all taking time out of your hectic Thank schedule you. again as Thank we get ready to kick it. off yet another week in the legislative session uh, join us next time right here on Capitol Dialogue